They're very interested in the generator. Oh no, they're very interested in the Frisbee. <laughs> so you're wondering, can you use extension cords with your portable generator to power stuff in your house, right? I am wondering. I'm gonna answer all that, and then the most important bonus tip is at the very end. So extension cords, portable generators, let's find out. You can use your portable generator with, a, with extension cords to run a refrigerator, your microwave oven, your TV, uh, window air conditioners, you can charge your phones, stuff like that. You're not gonna be able to run your furnace or a whole house air conditioner. That you have to upgrade to like a transfer panel or something like that. But we're talking about extension cords from here to the house. The most important thing is to keep your generator outside when you're running it. This puts out exhaust, which has carbon monoxide in it, and that will kill you and your family. If it's in your garage or in your basement or anywhere in your home, that's a bad thing, okay? So let's both be safe, run this outside, be safe. Portable generator means it's on wheels, right? And it also isn't grounded electrically. So when you run this thing with extension cords, you need to ground it to a fence post, a pipe in the ground or something, and you can use a jumper cable or some really long wire. On this model, there's a screw right on the control panel for your grounding. On other models, it's as simple as a screw with a green wire. That's your grounding point. And when you're running your appliances, your refrigerator, your microwave, other things are gonna pull a lot of power. You wanna stagger their use. Don't plug in and turn on your microwave oven, your air conditioner, and your refrigerator all at the same time. Because these plugs, they can't handle that load all at once. Someone's gonna comment on that, I know. So your generator may be, have a really high rating like this, and that means it'll run all sorts of things when run through a transfer switch into your home. But when you're just using the two outlets here, you're going to get 20 amps and 20 amps. And what does that mean? That means basically two heavy duty extension cords powering some stuff in your house, some space heaters, again, the microwave, TV, that kind of thing. You're not gonna run the whole house on this with extension cords. That would be bad. Extension cords, what to use? <laughs> All right, when you're selecting your extension cords, you want three-prong grounded outlet cords, and you want quality cords. I mean, you, you get what you pay for in life, and especially with extension cords. This is a 14-gauge wire extension cord. When you buy it, it'll say it on here. 14-gauge is ideal, 12-gauge is even better. This is my super duper 12 gauge extension cord and it has three outlets on it and there's a little light that lights up when it's energized so you know it's working. And on the side of this it says 12 AWG. Sometimes like this one, it doesn't say 14 gauge. So when you buy it, make sure, but don't cheap out on your cords. Oh. No. Okay? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> If you wanted to charge a bunch of cell phones and stuff, you didn't have a power strip, you could plug this into one of the outlets of your super duper cord. That's okay. But this in here to run your refrigerator is a bad thing. The other thing to think about is don't use a cord that's longer than you need. Don't buy a hundred footer if you're just gonna run into the house and run a couple things because extension cords actually heat up with use. So don't run the cords under carpet or stacks of cardboard and newspaper. Just be really safe about this. If you're interested in this particular generator, I have a review about it. I also have some links to purchase all this stuff in the notes below the video here. This one is Electric Start. One of your neighbors is gonna come over and say, oh, I can make you a back feed cable and power your house and plug your generator from here into an outlet in your house. Just say no, okay? <laughs> really not smart. It endangers you, it endangers your neighbors, 
it can ruin your appliances, and most importantly, it can injure or kill a line worker who's out on a pole trying to fix your electricity. Okay, so back feed cable, it's also called the suicide cable. Not a good idea, okay? Let's just, you and I, stay safe and alive. Do you like my hat? <laughs> I'm gonna link below. These are on Etsy. Really neat person made these hats for us. <laughs> Thank you. This is their favorite toy of the moment, but they're not very, oh, well, kind of interest. Okay, go play. There was a question oh. <laughs> from the camera operator. Hold on, I have to adjust. <laughs> Can you leave your generator on the rain? No, water and generators don't mix generally. Uh, so if it is raining, turn off your generator and ideally bring it into your garage. It is turned off already, then in the garage. Uh, if you don't have a garage, maybe you could put a piece of plywood over it and then a tarp. You don't want electricity and a gas powered engine out in the rain, okay? Okay. Are you interested in more generator tips? <laughs> That's a yes. This one's unfortunate. You have to chain up your generator when it's outside. Uh, there's a good chance it'll walk. Uh, it's, it's just kind of a fact of life, but heavy duty chain, chain to something sturdy. You know, if you can chain up your bike, you can chain up your generator. And if you want, you could spend some more time with me as well. We have some more generator videos floating right here. How to hook it up to your house safely, tune it up, keep it running. More of me, more generators right here. <laughs>